When I saw Civil War in theaters, someone next to me brought their child, who I assume was six to eight years old, to an R-rated movie? Are you kidding me? Did they even look at the details on why it's rated R before seeing the movie? This film being rated R for strong violence, bloody slash disturbing images, and language throughout? Did they think to themselves, yeah, I want to take my child to this movie. Why not wait until he's older to an age where he's allowed to watch R-rated movies? That is definitely one of my movie going pet peeves. Ignorant parents bring their child to an R rated movie. Whether it be R for violence or sex, I just thought, do you really want to take your child to this movie? Seriously? Hey movie buffs, I'm Jack Benner and welcome to my review of Civil War. And little spoiler, this has nothing to do with Captain America and Iron Man. This is a new dystopian action war film from A24, written and directed by Alex Garland. And this film stars Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spaney, Wagner Mora, Stephen McKinley Henderson, and many others. Set in a dystopian future America, it follows a team of photojournalists traveling across the United States during a civil war in a race against time to Washington, D.C. Now, to be fully honest, the only Alex Garland directed film I have ever seen was his directorial debut in 2015, Ex Machina, and that was a very good sci-fi film with an interesting screenplay, impressive visual effects, and I was surprised it won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, although my pick to win that category that year was Fury Road. But Ex Machina winning, that was a cool winner in my book. Strong direction and excellent performances, especially from both Oscar Isaac and her breakthrough role, Alicia Vikander, to which I felt like that was the film Alicia Vikander should have been nominated in Best Supporting Actress that year instead of The Danish Girl. But I do plan on watching his two other movies, such as Annihilation and Men, at some point in the future. And when I saw the trailer for Civil War, I thought it looked very intriguing. And the multiple reasons that got me interested in seeing this movie. One, Alex Garland, who directed Ex Machina, which I really liked. Two, the excellent cast involved. And three, of course, I am a big fan of the studio A24 and anything they put out, I'm interested in seeing it. And it seemed like they were taking a bit of a gamble with this film and this now being their most expensive film to date at $50 million budget surpassing last year's Bo's Afraid. I had a feeling this movie would generate some discussion surrounding the film. And I saw Civil War last week, very interested to see how I would feel about this movie. Now that I've processed my thoughts for a while and ready to record my review, I'm on the side that really dug this movie. Movie. I thought Civil War was great. Just from tension building, filmmaking, and performances, it succeeds on all of those. And it's definitely one of the best films I have seen so far this year. Let's start with the pros. First on what helps this movie flourish to greatness is the fantastic cast ensemble all around. This is one of the best performances I've seen from Kirsten Dunst. She does a terrific job at playing a stern, hardened, and stoic veteran war photographer who has seen so much in her career, and the amount she has seen has taken such a heavy toll on her, and she sold everything about that character excellently. And I've always loved her as an actress, do of course like her as Mary Jane in the Spider-Man trilogy, but looking back to movies such as Eternal Sunshine the Spotless Mind or her Oscar-nominated performance in The Power to Dog, and this is a reminder of how amazing of an actress she is and really picks interesting projects. And Kaylee Spaney does an amazing job as an aspiring war photographer who joins the team. And the emotion she goes through during all of this is sold phenomenally from the wide-eyed optimism, ambition, and getting you to feel empathy for her. And the bond and developing friendship between her and Kirsten Dunst's character was one of the main highlights of the film, especially from where it starts to where it ends. And I've heard she's great in Priscilla, do plan on checking that film out, but she has definitely proven to be a rising star. And after this, I'm definitely excited to see her in Alien Romulus this August. That teaser trailer was awesome. Wagner Mora is fantastic as Kirsten Dunst's colleague and providing welcome addition of comic relief, but also nailing the seriousness of the character at the same time. And I just remember seeing this actor. Where have I seen him before? Oh yeah, he voiced Death in Puss in Boots' The Last Wish. What a terrifying villain he was. I just love the smell of fear. Stephen McKinley Henderson is great as their wise old mentor. I always like seeing this actor pop up in movies, whether that would be Fences, Lady Bird, or Dune. I felt like he always has this great and interesting presence as an actor. Now, there are two supporting performances that don't have a lot of screen time, but do a good job. And one, I definitely want to talk about. One of them is Nick Offerman as the president, who does a good job with what he's given to do. And the second one, oh boy. 
Jesse Plemons in this movie. Now he's only in it for five minutes. He's only in it for one scene. Oh my God. He owned the hell out of that scene. Just an absolute nail biter of a scene that was. My God. Just the intense presence he brought. He was unpredictable. My God, that scene was just so suspenseful was his character. I feel like that's a true testament to how good of an actor you are. And just only show up for one scene for five minutes and just own every minute of it. And that reminds me, Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst are a real life couple and they were also in The Power of the Dog. And they were both nominated in the supporting acting categories for that movie. Both deserve nominations. And both this and Power of the Dog, two great movies. Props to Alex Garland for directing this movie phenomenally. His approach to crafting a gritty dystopian America and tension building is unparalleled. The cinematography in this movie is absolutely amazing. From the appropriate shot composition, and even in a nighttime sequence where characters are just talking, he knows how to frame it just right, and also knows how to properly hold on to conversation that gets you invested without just doing shot reverse shots. And one example of the amazing cinematography in this movie is a scene where the main group is going through a forest fire. That scene was just beautiful. But he knows how to properly capture the visceral war going on. Just how gritty and gruesome it is. He doesn't really hold back. He doesn't try to go too over the top with the violence. He shows it just right. He shows it just right to where it's like, could something like this happen today? And one disturbing image in this movie. There is one overhead shot with Kaylee Spaney in it. Oh, that was the most disturbing shot in the entire movie, I think. Just uh, could not get it out of my head after I've seen the film. And one technical aspect that is absolutely praiseworthy about this movie is the sound design. Just incredible. It is just so brutal, realistic, impactful. Just from the gunfire, explosions, just everything has an impact. And there were even some moments that were terrifying with the sound design that scared the crap out of me. And it is early in the year and I know Dune Part 2 will likely dominate the technical categories. But I would love for this to get an Oscar nomination for Best Sound Design. We'll see how the competition goes with other films that could get into that category. But an Oscar nomination for Best Sound for this film would be awesome. Now this is a very intense movie. And it does a tremendous job at building tension and suspense. In situations where nothing is going on, but you know something bad is about to happen. And there is a scene with Christmas decorations where you know something bad is about to happen and there are these snipers. And how that scene just builds and builds tension just had me on the edge of my seat. My heart was pounding. The quiet moments that increases that feeling of dread. The just knowing something bad is about to happen and you're just anxious to see. Or even loud moments during war that just gets you glued to the screen and you can't look away. And the action sequences are very well shot. They don't rely on shaky cam. And I also liked in the editing. I also liked though in the war scenes they put in the photos taken by the photojournalist during the action scenes. And for the action scenes, one highlight, the climax of this movie. Wow. It has some most riveting and jaw-dropping action scenes I have seen so far this year. Just, wow. The high tension, pacing, editing, absence of music, and the gruesomeness are all aspects that really made the action scenes enthralling. But the story I found to be riveting and engaging throughout and was a little different than what I expected it to be. This film was surprisingly not concerned about choosing sides or really getting in too much of the political side. And I'm not really one of those to get political in my reviews. It's nothing really I feel like discussing about. So to me, it was kind of refreshing that it didn't really focus on that too much. So I didn't really want it to be one of those movies that just try to shove a message down your throats. Unlike some other movies that just shove its message down your throat. They're like, do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Example, Don't Look Up, arguably the worst Best Picture nominee ever. But it never really goes in that territory and does its message subtly. That definitely does want to make me give it a second watch or look up other ending explain videos to get like, okay, I can kind of see what they're going for. But rather, I really liked how this film focuses on telling an engaging and straightforward story that really gets me to care about these characters. Along with the excellent acting and phenomenal filmmaking here. 
I am aware that some people are split on the vagueness of the plot, whether they wanted a little more of the story. I can agree with that a bit, but I don't really see that as being the point of the movie. But more so, you are with these characters throughout the journey, whether their goal and wanting them to see them succeed. I feel like that was more the point of the film rather than just getting in the political side of everything. Now, this movie is a bit of a slow burn, but I never found it too slow or boring. It took the appropriate time with these characters, getting you invested in them, their conversations, and as someone who has an interest in photography and wanting to make that a hobby this year, and being someone who's always had an admiration for journalism, I found those aspects of getting me to care about these photojournalists during all of this was very fascinating to see. As for some cons I have with this movie, the issues, one, I do feel like there was one music choice after an action scene that I felt like was a bit out of place. What I loved about the action scenes was the absence of music, but putting that song choice after that just kind of took me out of the movie a little bit and was a bit jarring. I was wondering, did this really fit the scene? And second, the ending did feel a bit abrupt. I was loving the third act and how it concludes. I was like, oh, it's already over? They just end it like that? Okay. To sum up, Civil War achieves successful results as an intense, engaging, gripping, and suspenseful action movie with phenomenal direction from Alex Garland and a fantastic cast ensemble. I would definitely recommend this movie to you if this movie looks interesting to you from the trailers or if you're fans of A24 or Alex Garland films like Ex Machina or Annihilation. However, do want to give you a warning after you've seen the trailer, do keep your expectations in check. If you're looking for a non-stop, fast-paced action movie, this movie is more of a slow burn that takes its time with its characters with action in between. So don't expect a non-stop action movie. This is more of a slow-moving film. Or if you're looking for something a little more in-depth, either with its political message or if its story explaining everything that happened, you're not really going to get that here. However, if you're looking for a masterclass in tension filmmaking and also a story with characters to get invested in throughout, I think you're going to be satisfied here. And it's pretty awesome that this is the first A24 movie to open at number one, the box office on its opening weekend. That is awesome. And I feel like this could join with Everything Everywhere All at Once as one of their highest grossing films. Now it has been receiving divisive reactions and I'm on the side that loved this movie. Some people liked it but didn't love it or thought it was okay. I would strongly recommend seeing Civil War for yourself because I think it's an incredibly well made movie. And now to grade it, I'm going to give Civil War 4.5 stars out of 5 and A-. minus. I recently heard that Alex Garland is not going to continue directing after this. And I think the reason heard, I think he wants to focus more on writing. I feel like that is a shame that he's not going to direct another film after this because I think he's a very talented director. This year has given us two great A24 films, this and Love Lies Fleeting. And this would so far be my second favorite film of 2024 behind Dune Part 2. So I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of Civil War? If you've seen it, do you agree? Disagree with my review? Or if you haven't seen it, are you interested in seeing the film or not? Let me know down below. Did you enjoy hearing my thoughts on this movie and want to see more reviews like this in the future? If yes, please hit that like and subscribe button if you're new here. And don't forget that notification bell for my next upload in the future. It really means a lot. And until the next video, I'm Jack Benner and look forward to another movie review.